Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Nick Drinks. I'm your host, Nick Britsky, and we have a special guest. We have Carrie Dullhofer, who is the co-owner, uh, founder of Bee Nectar, right here in Ferndale. And now, another episode of Game of Drinks, episode five. Brought to you by Diageo. Ah, Lena, House of Tyrell, sitting high above your tower as your fallen soldiers... Don't come in here and deliver exposition to me. I, 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 that's not what I meant. Unless you meant to bore me, you have failed. Damn! Ouch. The truth, like broken glass or Bud Light, is hard to swallow. Dilly dilly. This is no roast, but if it were, I imagine it would be dry and flavorless, like... Like a bottle of Asti? Well, at least you tried. Ooh, kind of a tough crowd in here, folks. I know why you're here. How will you do it? Beheading? Wild horses? Or are you just gonna stand here and stare at me until I die of old age? I'm not here to kill you. What monster would kill you in your own tower? There's a, uh, Jamie Lannister here to see you. Oh. Does he want? Tell him he can come in when he figures out how to clap without bruising his good hand. I see you're still here. Well, they say the eyesight's is first to go. Hopefully, you're the second. Boom! Stop that. Sorry. Take this fool with you. She always that man. <laughs> okay. Send in the one arm jerked and tell him to bring me some wine. I'm parched. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me. And thank you for acting, showing off your acting skills. That was great. Oh, yes. I loved being Elena. She is one of my favorite characters. Do you have a history of acting? You were pretty great. No, actually, I have none whatsoever. Well, I think that's your second career move. I just thought it would be fun. <laughs> Hey, I'll try it. So uh, we are here um, continuing our series of Game of Thrones scotches. Uh, if you actually look up top and click on the link, you can look at episode one through four. But now we are up to the House of Tyrell, uh, which is um, brought to you by the great people at Clanellish, which is kind of coming around the corner right here. Thank you so much to Diageo, who sponsored this. Um, they gave us all of the sample bottles, which are currently things you can pick up because the Game of Thrones scotches are sold out. Oh, wow. Yeah, actually, on the secondary market, these are going for hundreds of dollars. So Not surprised. Yes, we are very lucky to get these, and we are ruining all the value by opening them and drinking them. <laughs> well, that's what they're meant for. <laughs> so you told me you are not a scotch drinker. No, what? I don't typically. I usually mix it if oh. I drink it at all. Okay, so what's I, your mixed drink for scotch? Uh, ginger ale or, like, you know, some kind of lemon-lime or, yeah, like, you know, I do like whiskey sours, but so that, but scotch. So that's, that's pretty new to me. Okay. I've had experience with whiskey, but scotch is not something I have tried much of. So I here guess, we go. Here we go. All right. Let's do it. If you drink a neat spirit, what would it be? I want to do like scotch and whiskey. Okay. Like I love the idea of it. Um, it just is taking me a while to like get used to the flavors and I get it. it's bold, you yeah. know, I need to like thin it out, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to, do it the way it's meant to be done. Well, so we're going to help you today. It. All right. <laughs> so um, what we do first off the bat is we uh, taste, taste the base model. So this is the Clanellish 14. And we, um, we're reading up on this a little bit. It's actually one of the most northern uh, distilleries, like way, way, way north, which is a counterpoint to the House of Tyrell, exactly. which is more southern. I'm kind of surprised they did that. Yeah. But, oh, well. We'll try it. Yeah. Um, high proof. This, is, this comes in at 46% ABV. Um, it says there's a lot of maritime and salty flavors on this and candle wax. Is that something else we read about? Yeah, which is sort of odd to me, but the, the salt factor is, is more intriguing, but we'll see. You know, when people describe like wines and stuff, they say the weird, they use the weirdest terms to describe things. So it doesn't always mean it tastes like you're eating a candle. My favorite is a uh, rubber garden hose. Oh, that's a fun one. <laughs> Horse blanket. Horse blanket is a good one, yes. Cheers. Cheers. So it smells like a very traditional scotch. I don't get a waxy note, but I do get but some sweet notes, mm -hmm. I feel like. It's 
Smells like most of the ones that I've tried. Yeah, very amber. Mm. Some bitter, bitter sharp notes. Um, definitely some barrel. Yeah, they're smooth. It does not taste like a 46 at all. No, that's that's real easy. Mm. Dangerous. <laughs> um, that's not bad. There's okay. a lot of oaky characteristics. Um, really long finish too, I feel like. Yeah, it's still hanging in there. So um, coming from Bee Nectar, do you guys do any barrel aging? We do a lot of barrel aging. So, so I am familiar with like, you know, the the characteristics, I guess, of some of these. Mm -hmm. Although it's really just a hint that ends up in the product. So this is a lot bigger, but you know, some of the ones that we drink and we make uh, have that boozy character and sure. it's like, it's very reminiscent of the liquor or the scotch or the bourbon. And it's actually, it always adds such a nice character. Well, and these are aged for years. How yeah. long are you aging your products? Um, at least six months, oh. but I don't think we've even done one that was aged for that few months. It's okay. like nine, Two year, two years, three years. We've got a, our bourbon barrel age episode thirteen coming out, and it's a three year barrel age. Okay. So we've, you know, we're getting up there. We're, sure. We've been around for a while, so we're aging things a little bit longer just to see what happens. And what size barrels do you age in? Oh, like a standard the sta fifty-five. Yeah, the standard yeah. fifty-five okay. gallon. Right. We have like several of them, so we lay them down and bring them out every year. There you go. Yeah. All right. Mhm. Mm yeah. Definitely is a more savory scotch, I feel like. It is. It's big. And I now I'm getting the, the candle wax. <laughs> yeah, I am. I think those flavors are starting to come out on the mm -hmm. second sip. So, yeah. Savory. They're there, but it's not um, unappetizing. No, it's mild. It's blended in there. I don't think I'd be drinking a candle anytime soon. Mm -mm, don't plan on it. Yeah, that seems uh, to <laughs> shorten my lifespan a little bit on that. <laughs> so, um, this doesn't have an age statement on here. It just says Clinelsch Reserve. Um, but we believe that this is a, a different bottle than uh, what we've tried over here. So um, let's see. Uh, actually, Nick, who helped us out, thank you so much in our previous uh, little uh, matinee that we just did. He is tasting these as we speak. Mm -hmm. And Nick said that this is an echo of uh, the other scotch. Uh -huh. So yeah, we were wondering if this is maybe an Americanized version of the Clinellish. And I'm getting the crest now. I'm getting kind of herbal notes. Mm -hmm. It's much lighter smelling. Mm -hmm. You want to oh. give your, your two quick quick scents? Sure. Sweeter too. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> Hello folks. Yes, so so the, the, the original is really kind of much more characteristic. And this one sort of is like, it's kind of like, you know, this is the full color and this is the pastel version. Hold those up together. So you have the two next to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in fact, actually, you almost have that too. Mm -hmm. There's kind of a lighter version there. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nick tends to also be our, um, he talks about the geography. He talks about pronunciation. He gives us the background for Scotch. He is invaluable resource to these. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Hmm. It's not quite as smooth, but it's sweeter. Yeah, yeah. it's sweeter. No more. I get those sharp, savory notes too. Um, mm -hmm. A little more pronounced bitterness too, I feel like as well. Yeah. Hmm. It's still in the like mouthfeel too, the lingering finish on this one's same. There is a different viscosity almost, like a little, a little heavier, the oily, you talked yeah. about oily. Yeah, it's like, so, yeah. it's almost slick. So yeah, we kind of read the two descriptions on the back of here and um, yeah, some of the things they wanted to point out, the scotch is light and floral like the House of Tyrell. Um, it's not to be underestimated though, it's underlying complex combination of highland and maritime qualities. So yeah, sharp words, sharp minds, sharp accents, actions, fruity, waxy, sea spicy flavors, single malt. Hmm. Yeah, that's all here. It's all here. <laughs> All right, so comparing these to the Bee Nectar products, what if someone's a scotch drinker and they wanted to get into mead, where would you send them? Oh, well, probably, like I said, our episode 13 is traditional mead, mm -hmm. aged in a bourbon barrel, so you get to really pick up the character in that. Um, but again, it's a traditional mead, and I know some people don't really think they like mead. It's, it is a sweeter drink. 
Um, something more approachable would be like our Zombies Take Manhattan, mm-hmm. which we age in rye whiskey barrels. And uh, that one is like an apple and honey with cherry. Mm-hmm. So it's similar to our Zombie Killer, but um, you get the nice like whiskey character in that one. And it's it's sweeter, but it's smooth, but you get, you get the boozy character. And that one's a lot of fun too. And if you live outside of Michigan, obviously you can find the products all over Michigan. All over Michigan, 20 some states. Wow. Europe. Okay, wow. So definitely far. So we, we get out there. Okay. Yeah. If someone doesn't have it in their state, how would you recommend getting it? <sighs> well. Not that easy. We, yeah, we, we don't ship online yet. But we are in the works of doing that. So okay. hopefully people will be able to get it online soon where that's something we're working on. Um, or, you know, we have a, a bottle club okay. and people buy, you know, proxy or we will just like, you know, we'll make sure we get it to the people somehow. So give me your two most popular meads and then your most popular cider. The most popular meads, probably uh, the Necro, which is a mango and black pepper mead mm-hmm. and Tuco style freakout. Okay. So agave and lime. And then the ciders would be Zombie Killer, and our new one is a Punk Lemonade. So Fun. apple and raspberry and lemon. And how would people find more about the product? Beanectar.com. Great. Thank you so much for watching this series. Uh, again, we're going through the whole series of nine, so we are up to five. We are halfway. And uh, we will be wrapping this up somewhere in the middle of the season. We were aiming to have this um, end by the season premiere. That's not gonna happen. So we're gonna keep going and we are gonna finish this before the end. So if you like more of these, check it out at youtube.com slash Nick Drinks. Find me on Facebook and Instagram at nickdrinks.com, all spelled out. Terry, thank you so much. Cheers. Until next time, everyone. Cheers.